John Tagami. Uh, last name is spelled T is in Tom, A G A M I. Now, my first question is uh, essentially, what is your involvement with you know, the Civil Liberties Act? Maybe when it came to pass, and maybe today. Uh, I was uh, when it passed. I was with uh, working for Senator uh, Spark Matsunaga. I was one of uh, the Senate sponsor of the legislation. And, uh, I wasn't directly involved, although I was on the staff. So I remember the debates on the floor, and uh, of course the excitement in the Japanese American community about uh, an issue like this, and it's fi finally reached the floor of the. Uh, the United States Senate in the U.S. House. Now, what are all the things personal and both in the sense of national, American national, to uh, sort of revisit the Civil Liberties Act 20 years later? Well, I think like any uh, historic uh, talks about universal themes, and I think that, uh, you know, every 20 years, 15, 20 years, we have a new generation, and so they have to be reminded, just like, uh, you know, the purpose of our Memorial Foundation and, and the Japanese American National Memorial is to make sure that uh, there's a continuing process and availability of information about uh, events that... Uh, not just to our, us as Japanese Americans, but as Americans. Uh, it's part of the fabric of the world. Can I ask you maybe what personally have one of the doing the Civil Liberties Act to you? I think, uh, you know, it's one of those milestones where, uh, you know, you feel, I think to an extent, uh, before that, uh, Japanese Americans had felt part of America, but still apart from America. And uh, there was always that, that lingering legacy of, uh, of uh, discrimination and, uh, and racism that had prevailed in an earlier time. And uh, of course, we made great strides up into then and uh, had great members of Congress like uh, Mark Senator Matsunaga and Norman Etta and Senator Inouye and, and came in the way. Uh, but it was still, nevertheless, we had, uh, it wasn't acknowledged in a, in, in, uh, officially, and I think that was important for us as a community to have that. And uh, personally, for me, it was just that my uh, my dad had been a fought in World War II, and it was one of those uh, fought in the served in the military intelligence service. I believe you had others who have been interviewed who uh, served in that. And, uh, uh, he had been brought up in California and served overseas in, in Burma and other places uh, and ended up actually uh, serving as MacArthur, General MacArthur's interpreter raid for about uh, five years after the war. And uh, you know, people like to tell the story that he had uh, actually met the Emperor of Japan and, uh, in a one-on-one -on -one interview, which was uh, quite unprecedented until that time. And, uh, so it was an odd moment where a, uh, uh, a Japanese-American in a soldier's uniform uh, of, a, of, a, of a conquering nation sitting across the coffee table talking to who was, who was then still a, de you know, a, a divine figure in, uh, to the Japanese and the emperor uh, as equals. You know, and, and it wasn't so many years before that my father had been educated in Hiroshima as a young, you know, as an elementary school. And uh, when the emperor, then Crown Prince Hirohito came through the town, they all had to go out and meet him. But they weren't able to look at, at him because you know, you're not supposed to look at a divine, godlike figure. And, uh, so it was kind of a long journey, an interesting journey for him. And uh, it really is, it kind of encapsulates really the American journey too, you know, where, uh, uh, equality and uh, fair play and uh, uh, those kinds of values. Uh, and I think that's, that's why.
why there's a, there's a connection between his, uh, his service to America and his, coming to, his parents coming to America and the whole Japanese-American story and our American story. So.